dye, don't worry about over mixing, you know, mixing too much dye. As long as you leave it in sort of a nice dark, dark place where it's not going to be, um, have too much light because obviously you've put it in a dark place, uh, it keeps, it keeps for quite a long time. Uh, in your kitchen, you're fine using Kool-Aid, um, you know, in your kitchen because it's a food colouring, so it's not a dangerous chemical. I would say that if you have a go with Kool-Aid and you think, yeah, do you know what, I really, I'm really enjoying this, um, I want to try some acid dyes or natural dyes, then you really need to think about getting, um, giving them their own appliances or... Um, what do you call them, pans, you know, your own pans and things like that because they are toxic and you really don't want to cook your food after you've used that. But these, just using, you know, your Kool-Aid, you can use your microwave safe or a steamer, depending on what you want to use. Preferably I use a microwave when I'm doing this sort of dime because you're doing, you're doing one, you know, steam at a time, so it's easier to do. Once you... Get your microwave bowl obviously make sure it's microwave safe you want a quite a nice deep bowl what i quite like actually are the you know the uh, lunchbox tubs so they're like flat at the bottom and then they're quite wide and like nice nice i don't think i've got any there uh they're like you know quite big you can lay out your yarn nice and flat so you get more even coverage bowls are okay too as i say you, can, you get your yarn what I tend to do is sort of weave it into an S, you know, like an S shape or like a river, so that it's nice. I don't know if you can see that. So it's like a like an S shape. And then with this particular, the way I particularly did this one, you can see it's got block colour. So I've poured in the red. I've then done the blues in the middles and then put this plummy colour, which is mixed with the, the blue where it's saturated uh, up from having water. That's the other thing actually, I forgot to mention. Preparing your fibre for dyeing, obviously I use a vinegar solution. In this particular size, if I was doing one skin, I would use two capfuls of vinegar, distilled white vinegar that you can get from the supermarket. And I leave mine overnight. Okay, some people, may do it for about 30 minutes but I find that the yarn takes the dye well much better if left overnight because it gets it eliminates all those air pockets um, that wall you know which fibre is notorious for once you've done that and you get your fibre you want to squeeze out the excess water you don't want you, you don't want your yarn to be absolutely wringing wet because you're adding more fluid into your bowl. So all that's gonna do is just, it's just you're just gonna end up with this really muddy, sort of jumbled mess. And it's just, all your colors are gonna merge at a really, you know, a much faster rate. They're gonna be watered down and you're just not, you know, you're not gonna get a nice effect from it. So you wanna give it a good squeeze, get all your excess water out, and then put your yarn into an S shape. And then as I say with this, I started off with red at the bottom and then when I got to the middle, I did blue going into green and then I did the plum going into the blue. And then as that mixed, you get all these sort of really beautiful colours. You know? Now, the red. Why did I put red into a plum? and blue and green and there is lemon in there actually but you know it almost looks white because it's that weak the reason why i put red in is because it's what i call as a surprise color you know i could have i could have just left it as the blue and the plums and the greens and it would have looked really nice you know but it look it looks in my opinion quite flat so if you add a surprise color like the red it just i don't know it just gives it that something something special it just sort of adds that sort of wow factor i think you know it's shocking isn't it uh, so that is that mm -hmm. obviously if you don't do if you don't do block color 
and you sort of just spray all the different colours in. They will all sort of mingle and you'll end up with yarn that sort of looks like that. Now, this brings me on to my next subject. <laughs> when you're dyeing, when you, when, before you pre-soak your, your skin, make sure that it's tied uh, in a figure of eight, okay? So you just literally part, part the skin like that into two, like that, and you do a figure of eight with a piece, another piece of yarn, okay? Preferably, uh, it's easier when you're doing these if you use something a synthetic because it doesn't take colour so you can easily identify it and make sure that it's it's placed within four places because this was only done in two and I dyed it and I put it in my spin cycle because after you've you finished dyeing you need to make sure that you um, get all the excess water out of your yarn if you want it to dry quickly you can do this by putting it in the spin cycle which is what I've done um, which I do with all my yarn or you can put it folded up into a towel and you can jump on it I know that sounds really weird but you can sort of jump on it and it squeezes all the excess moisture out um, and so you can do it that way but yeah that is literally I took it out of the spin cycle and it is an absolute train wreck so I'm gonna have to re-spin that and then put it back on the nidgy noddy and get that back into the skin hey ho it happens um, I'm trying to think is there anything else uh, I will say a little bit about colour have I said about the microwave basically when you're when you've done finishing doing your colour, sorry I know I'm jumping all over the place, um, but I'm excited. When you finish doing your colour, um, you put it on for five minutes if you're going to use the microwave, okay? Uh, you cover it lightly like you would do a microwave meal. And then the way to check if all the colour has been exhausted is that the water will run clear. If it hasn't, then just put it on for another five minutes. If after that it still hasn't exhausted, which which is common with uh, like really dark blacks or blue or sort of really dark colours, then just put in a cap full of vinegar and that should help that come along. Right, so I think we've covered that. Uh, if you're going to use a steamer, I mean I've got a three tiered steamer, you just sit, sit the yarn on top and that takes that takes longer i leave mine in for about 20 minutes um and you just have to sort of watch it and play it by eye really making sure that i mean steamer for me i wouldn't i wouldn't use a steamer if you've never done dyeing before because it is a lot more temperature control um i would stick with the microwave because it is really easy and it's so quick it's so so quick you literally put it in for five minutes bang it's done you know Brilliant. I mean, I use um, I use on the stove if I'm doing large quantities of dye, or I want large quantities of skin the same colour. But when you're just doing one, it's a no-brainer, really. I will just quickly mention because I will go because I know I'm. God, I think this video is going to be about twenty minutes long. Um, I will say that. When you're using colour, just bear in mind that there is no white, okay? Like in art, when you want a lighter colour, you can just, you know, add a bit of white and easy peasy, not a dime. The way to achieve that and the way to work around it is you basically just dilute it, okay? Diluting is your white. I've got a really, really, really strong hot pink and... I can get baby pink with that just by adding less dye and up in the water. Okay, and always remember, you know, you can you can always add. You can always add. You can't take away. Now with the shading, don't don't rush to go and you know automatically think. Oh, I know what will make my, my uh, dye dark. I'll add a little bit of black, which you do. You know, which when you're painting, you do because it's. Um, the pigments are completely different. A black pigment in most dyes, well, dyes that I've personally worked with, like the landscape dyes, they, they're not actually pure black. You know, they, 
they they cast a um, sort of charcoaly grey, which I love. I mean, I do my witch's beauty, um, which is on the shop. You know, I use really vivid colours, and then I use the black. Uh, I over dye them with with that colour, and it sort of I don't know. It gives them a really nice smouldering, you know, mysterious sort of edge. Well, I like them anyway. Um, so yeah, so don't don't reach for the black straight away unless that's the sort of um, sort of depth you're going for. You know, sort of greys and charcoals and sort of like I've got a really nice like a uh, skin of lace actually that I did and I did them all different purples and then I over dyed with black and then you've got like charcoaly purpley sort of yummy colours um yeah they're, they're really nice actually black is I do like black anyway I'm rambling now so I'm gonna go um I hope you find this tutorial helpful as I say I've got a picture tutorial on my blog which is a stash addict blog .com. Um, but I just wanted to do this little vlog uh, just because it's easier to talk um, about the practical sides of stuff you know about your tools and about keeping safe and keeping your hands and skin and everything protected so anyway have fun and let me know how you get on okay bye